Hello again and welcome to another edition of Shed Talk, my weekly magazine video series looking at keeping, breeding and showing of cage birds, um, with a special focus on the exhibition style buzzard gar. Well as the um, thumbnail and the description of this video suggests, um, we're going to be ringing the um, five. So what I thought I would do um, before we go out and have a look at me ringing um, those is um, just show you the difference between a split ring that we use on the five and the closed ring that I'm currently using on the budget car. And I, I might talk very briefly about the um, reason why I'm using those two different split rings or two different types of rings uh, in my shed. Right, so as I say, let's have a look at those rings. So here we are, then these are the two um, types of ring that I'm currently using. Um, and as you can probably see, um, we've got the split ring on the right, uh, this one here, and the closed ring on the left. Um, and I think the difference is fairly obvious. So the, the closed ring is, as it says, as it suggests, is uh, closed. So um, there is no... Um, opening on the ring other than the um, main ring, so a little bit like a ring you've put on your finger. Um, the split ring, on the other hand, is um, uh, opened, so there is an opening here, um, and uh, that means that um, we will need to close the ring once we put it on to the bird's leg. So the two differences, so the closed ring here, um, this one, uh, that I've got from, I get that ring from the uh, Budgery Gar Society uh, and um, the Budgery Gar Society require that if you're going to ring up to win any of their awards um, that you use a, the bird has a closed ring on it um, and that uh, um, and for the um, young bird or breeder section, that closed ring must have the breeder's number on it. So as you can see here, uh, this particular ring does. It has my number on it. Um, and again, it has the date on it and it has a um, Buzzery Gar logo um, on the ring. I'll just see if I can get that facing upwards. I'm hoping you can see that there is a... Um, I suppose a, an outline picture of a budgery gar's face on it. So um, that's the budgery gar society ring. Um, and you can see that both the two rings have a similar colour. And that just represents uh, this year's ring, so 2024 rings. Um, uh, the colour sequence follows a set pattern for each of the rings. Um, so that's why I use the um, closed rings on the budgery gar. Uh, rings. On the, the split rings uh, here, um, I use the split rings. They don't have anything on them other than um, the year and a number representing the number. So a number one you can see there, um, meaning it's the first bird that I've run and that goes through in, in sequence. Um, and um, the reason I use split rings on the five is, first of all, my understanding is that you don't need to ring a um, the uh, five canary to show it and win any other awards and the second um, uh, which means I don't have to have uh, a closed ring on them and I use the split rings because it makes it slightly easier to fit the ring um, as the bird's older as you can imagine with the closed ring there's a, 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 a few days um, period where you can fit the ring the closed ring over the bird's foot um, after that um, it becomes more and more difficult, um, so they have to be rung when they're in the nest box. With the split ring, uh, they can be rung at realistically at any age, um, because it's just a matter of sitting the opening over the over the leg of the bird, and then closing them. Um, rings come in various sizes, so if you're keeping birds, then you will need to make sure you've got the correct size for your bird. Um, some of the bigger canaries require bigger rings. The fives require a fairly small ring. So anyway, that's um, the rings. I did do a, um, a, I think a full, almost a full episode uh, a few years ago on ringing and why I ring my birds. Um, so I'll put a link to that on the top of the screen now. 
Um, so if you want to go and have a look at that for a bit more information on the ringing of birds. Anyway, let's go out now then and we're going to use that first few close rings on those birds, those young five, um, out in the flight. So here we are back out here in the um, outside flight looking at fives from breeding to bench. And um, as I said, we are due to start um, ringing the four chicks. The four chicks are all doing um, really, really well at the moment. So they've all now jumped the nest. They are all perching. I've not seen them picking up seed and feeding themselves yet, but my expectation is that they are um, if they're not doing that already, they're very, very close to it. They do look very independent, much more independent than um, uh, than I seem to remember them at this stage last year. But I'm sure that's probably just my poor memory rather than um, a, an actual fact. But yeah, so the so the birds uh, or the youngsters are doing really well um, in both the cages, both in terms of the original pair and um, the new pair that I've put down. Uh, have now rebuilt nests, um, which is good news. Um, there are no signs of any eggs uh, just yet, but I expect that, um, you know, my expectation is over the next couple of days uh, there will be eggs in in if one of the nests, if not in both, because like I say, both the hens have rebuilt, which is um, really good news. So what I'll do now then is I will show you how I ring the young fives using the split rings that we looked at earlier. So as you can see here, um, uh, I use a pair of, just a pair of long nose pliers, a small pair uh, of long nose pliers that I use to just pinch the ring together once I've got it over the bird's leg. Um, it's a bit tricky when you're trying to do this on camera. Um, it's much easier when um, I'm just doing it off camera. Obviously I need to try and keep the, um, ring and the bird in view of the camera as well as keeping both under control so it makes it a little bit more um, trickier generally though it's not particularly difficult um, the uh, just slip the ring over the leg and then um, pinch it closed um, i do like to check that um, the ring is fully closed before i finish off um, and once i've done that uh, that the ring is then um, actually can maneuver on the leg it's not too tight on the leg which you can probably see in some of the pictures that i'm showing you so anyway that is um ringing the uh, young fives so that's a update on the uh, fives out here what we'll do is we'll just pop back into the um, main budgerigar flight and have a quick um, update on the birds in there and how they're going and um, what pairs I've still got left and um, which pairs I have now managed to split up ready for um, that sort of break before the holiday period. Right, let's pull back indoors then. Well after all the excitement um, out there with the fives, all going um, tickety-boo out there with you know chicks and uh, nest being built up, just waiting for the second round to start. Um, in here, it's actually pretty much the complete opposite um, in that we've got almost all of the breeding cages now closed down. So um, I think the last time we, uh, in the last episode, I think we had still had three breeding cages going. That was cage two, uh, cage five and cage six. So cage two is now closed. I've taken the hen out of there. She's now back in the flight. Probably one of the ones that's making all the racket in there, but anyway, she's back in the main in the main flight now. Um, at cage five, which has the two um, fostered youngsters in there, um, the fo youngsters are definitely feeding themselves. So I'm going to give it about another day, um, and I'm going to remove the hen, and she can go back in there, and and the two youngsters will go into the nappy flight um, for the time being. Um, and then finally, we've got uh, cage number six, which I'm a little bit uncertain about at the moment. So this is the Lutino. So the hen in there, a dark green hen, laid three eggs. Um, and I know all, though, all three of those are clear. Um, but there was then like a pause of about four days. She didn't lay. 
and now she started laying again and we've got two eggs in there i've not candled those two eggs um, but I have seen every time the hen comes out, the cockbird is mating with her. So um, he treads her almost as soon as she comes out of the uh, nest box. So I'm sort of hoping that maybe he missed the first couple of eggs, um, and or the first three eggs, and that the last three or so are going to be full. So, yeah, that's what I'm hoping anyway in uh, cage number six. And we might just get some final chips off there. If they're clear, I'm going to take him out. He'll go back into the main flight. Um, I'll let her sit those for a, a couple of weeks and then uh, I'll remove her as well. Um, just to try and finish off all of the uh, breeding in here as quickly as possible. So there we go. That's uh, a quick roundup of the budgery guards. Not a lot really in here uh, going on now. Um, in either the next episode or the episode after that, what we will do is we'll get all the youngsters from in here back out again and do another assessment and I'll have a look at um, the likely keepers from um, the, this year's breeding season. Well, once again, that just about brings us to the end of another episode of Shed Talk. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit the like button. All the likes do... Um, you know, uh, help the channel to be found more widely on YouTube. So they all do help. So please do um, hit the like button. Um, if you're not yet a subscriber, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, but most importantly, until the next one, do stay safe and enjoy your birds. Mm -hmm.